Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In this video we're going to continue talking about Chomsky grammars and we're going to look at a little uh, demo program that I've written which will help us to kind of evolve Chomsky grammars and to look at the possible uh, strings that are part of a language defined by a grammar. So in the last video we went through the different levels of the Chomsky grammar. We're going to focus on regular and context-free because the program that I've written only handles uh, those levels of the of the hierarchy. And so here is what our little program looks like. This top area is intended for us to type in our productions. So for example, S goes to A or AS for the grammar that we looked at last time. We can then parse that, which turns it into an intermediate form. In a later video, we'll look at uh, at the workings of this code, uh, because it's actually relevant to, to some of the things that we want to explore in Scala. And then in this, this is a list view here. This list gives us uh, all of the current non-terminated strings. So if it has something that's non-terminal in there, it will appear in this list. Things will move down to this list once everything has uh, is terminal. So what we'll get down here is only the things that are actually in the language. So if I hit advance, what happens is that S can become either the A, which because it's only a terminal, moves down into this bottom list, or an AS, which stays here. And if I advance again, the AS can either become AA or AAS. And if I continue hitting advance, you can see exactly what happens here is that we produce strings of one or more A's. What if, instead of doing just one or more A's, what if I wanted to have a, come up with a grammar that produces some number of A's followed by some number of B's? Well, we need to modify our grammar here, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to break the formal representation here of this being a regular grammar, but of course the fact that I can convert it uh, to just one of these two forms, these, what we're doing here will still be regular. So the A can become either an A followed by an A. This allows us to keep repeating as many A's as we want. Or it can become an A followed by a B, a non-terminal B. And then the non-terminal B can become either just a plain B or it could become a, plain, a terminal B followed by a non-terminal B. So this grammar here the way this is written, we start producing A's, and we can produce A's for a while until at some point we decide to switch from being producing a non-terminal A to a non-terminal B, and from that point on we produce only B's. So if we parse that out and I click advance, the S becomes an A. That A becomes AA and AB. Note that we still haven't gotten anything that's a final string yet. But if I click advance on this, that AB had the ability to become the, if it went through this rule, uh, just became AB, okay? And then other things advanced that you can see here. So if we click advance again, we have AB, we also have AAB, and we have ABB. And here we have a whole set of rules that all have a non-terminal at the end uh, with different numbers of Bs in them. We advance there, and so then we add to our list the set of strings of length 4, which are made up of A's followed by B's, and then we'll get the set of strings of length 5, and set 6, etc. Okay, so this is a grammar that generates A's followed by B's, one or more of, of each. Turns out one of the things that I can't do with a regular grammar is produce a uh, strings that have the same number of A's and B's. So I mentioned in the previous video that the one of the restrictions on regular grammars is effectively they have no memory. And so after you've put down a certain number of A's, you don't remember how many A's you've put down, so you can't match it in the number of B's. I can do A's followed by B's, uh, but I can't make it so that they so that they match. That's not something that I'm capable of doing inside of the bounds of a of a regular grammar. For that, we'd have to go to context-free, and this tool will allow us to, to write out 
context-free uh, grammars. So how exactly could we do that? Well, it turns out actually writing A's followed by B's is very simple. We can just do it with our single start symbol. Start symbol either becomes AB, which is a perfectly happy string that has one A and one B, or it can become an A followed by the start symbol followed by a B. If we parse that, and I click advance here, so it can become AB, or AABB, or three A's followed by three B's, four A's followed by four B's, and so on. So you can see how this grammar, which is no longer regular, this is no longer fits the rules, the restrictions of a regular grammar, but it's perfectly happy as a context-free grammar. It can uh, basically remember how many A's there were and put that many B's, the context-free grammar uses a, its memory comes in the form of a stack though, and in, so the way this would work in the pushdown automata is every time we put an A, we push down something onto the stack, and then as we're writing Bs, we pop them off, and we know that we're done when the stack is empty. From that description, it should probably be clear that I can't then put an equal number of Cs. I could put something that does, um, more C's uh, later on, but I can't do something that uh, that will do the same number of A, B's, and C's. What if I wanted to take this grammar and make it so it was basically what we'd write as A to the N, B to the N, C to the M. So I want to make it so this is followed by more C's afterwards. Well, what I could do for that is put in a non-terminal C and then simply have it so that our rule for C is that uh, it can either become just a terminal C or it can become a terminal or a non-terminal and terminal. And then when I advance this, you see we get an ABC, we get an AB and a CC or an AA. Whoop! I have an error in here and that somehow Reset, advance. I like that step, but this is not what I was expecting. Oh, because the Bs are put afterwards. Um, so my S, yeah, can become, and then the Cs will be embedded. And then if I advance, so this, they're, the C's are always after 1B. Okay, so this can't make this quite this simply. Um, how can we go about doing this? How about I do this? So S goes to A, C. A goes to either A, B, or a a b and then the c does that let's try parsing that see if this is the rule set that i wanted for equal numbers of a's and b's followed by however many c's so the s becomes an ac and this becomes a whole bunch of different possibilities but then we start getting a b c uh, which wound up being generated in two different ways here a, B, C, C, A, A, B, B, C, A, B, B, C, lots of op options there. A, B, C, C, advance again. So I want all of these to have the rule that I'm going for. Should add something into the code that makes it so it only keeps the uh, distinct elements of this. But equal numbers of A's and B's followed by however many C's. Okay, looks like that's what we've got. And so we could advance one more time. And these lists are starting to get pretty long, especially because they are not distinct. But this is generating, this grammar is generating what we want. So this is an example of a context-free grammar. You've seen how we can kind of use these grammars. Uh, we can think about what these grammars produce. And if we want to produce a certain language, we can use these grammars. Turns out the programming languages are pretty much all laid out using context-free grammars. Uh, so these are very helpful us in computer science, and we'll come in the following videos 
and look at how we can use regular grammars and context-free grammars not through regular, not necessarily as grammars. In the case of regular grammars, we're going to use them as regular expressions, but how we can uh, use them in our programs to aid with uh, making it easier to to work with text.